Good morning. Welcome to the first Best Practices Spotlight. This event is part of a series we are launching at Build Up California to showcase examples of what works well in building childcare supplies in, not, in our communities. So how can we improve EC facilities expansion, improve, improvement and sustainability in a more equitable way? So we'll be discussing this and these and other topics as part of this series. This series is also part of our building blocks for an equitable recovery initiative through which we explore the most effective strategies to equitably expand, improve and sustain early learning and care facilities as we face and recover from the shocks of the COVID pandemic. My name is Erica Erickson, and I am the Policy and Program Officer for Early Care and Education at the Low Income Investment Fund. In this role, I have the honor to coordinate the development of Build Up California, a statewide network of early learning facilities champions launched just last year. Before we introduce the speakers and our moderator, I want to share an action alert and some information about logistics. First action alert. This is a week of action. Please join us in educating our congressional representatives about the importance of including resources for the physical infrastructure of child care in Build Back Better Act. So please visit the website of the National Children Facilities Network, ncfn.org, and I'll put in the chat in a, in a little bit. And please go to the page of Take Action. We, it's easy, you put your name and your zip code and your address there and it automatically sends the letter to your representatives and then also you have the option to share on social media and invite your friends to take action too. So after you take the action, um, you can take it while you watch, but, or uh, I will share also in the link, uh, the link in the chat during the event. So, but now let's go to the logistics. So this event, we will start with an initial overview of the Child Care Facilities Fund by our guest speakers, who will share this, their perspectives on this program that we are highlighting as a best practice. Following the initial remarks, we will have a Q&A session. Please use the chat or the Q&A Q function to share your insights and questions. Our guests will be answering the questions during the, uh, during the, the last part of the, the event. So I would like to introduce now our moderator for this discussion, who will introduce our speakers. Jamila Hanif is an early childhood educator, business owner, and consultant with Watch Me Grow Inc. I had the pleasure of meeting Jamila uh, when, we, when she was a member of the Solano County Local Child Care and Development Planning Council, and president of the Solano County Family Child Care Association. She has participated in Build Up California activities, including meeting with legislators and workshops. She's doing amazing work in Solano and beyond, especially in the area of adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. She leads a weekly interview series on social media, um, and you can check her on YouTube and Facebook every Wednesday at 6 p.m. with the Bounce Back Wednesdays. Jamila, Jamila shared with me some years ago that she wanted to expand her family check at business to a center-based one, but didn't know how and didn't have the resources. So based on her excellent interview skills that I already know and her interest in the topic, I invited her to join us today to moderate the discussion. So thanks for joining us, Jamila. Welcome, and it's with you. Thank you, thank you, Erica. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, it is a pleasure to, to moderate this conversation. Um, thank you to the Build Up California team also for inviting me. Um, man, this, this to such an you know, informative event uh, with a lot of busy people, but we know that this is important. So as Erica mentioned um, to you all that basically everything I do, I'm a strong advocate for, um, for the mental health of children and families and providers. And what is being addressed today really aligns because everything surrounding and connected to the child impacts them directly and indirectly, especially 
when we consider the ecological system. So I am glad to be here with other ECE leaders who are uh, making a difference in the lives of children and families here in our state. So, you know, when it comes to facilities, to physical space, to um, childcare businesses and schools, um, those are key elements of creating high quality learning and care experiences. Um, you have the well-functioning comprehensive ECE systems that include investments in the facilities um, as it complements other components of the ECE. So it is important that we invest um, in the capable teachers uh, and healthy foods. You have um, quality materials we need to invest in. Um, we need to um, have a functional and healthy environment for all of our children and teachers too. So uh, as Erica mentioned, I have been exploring the possibility of expanding my business to serve more children, especially right now during COVID. Um, the families and kids here in our neighborhood in Vallejo, I mean, they need it. And uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I haven't been able to identify those resources um, to make this dream a reality yet. And this is why I am so curious and can't wait to hear about this conversation today about the Child Care Facilities Fund, which serves San Francisco and the county and hopefully other counties pretty soon. So last talk with our ECE leaders involved in the Child Care Fund, Shelly. So I would like to introduce them on the screen with me as I introduce them. Um, Erica will include their bios in the chat. But what I'll do, I'll, I'll share a brief, brief overview um, of their brilliance. Because when I was reading these bios, I was like, wow, OK. So I'm going to start with Kim, Kim DiGiacomo. De De um, she is the National Program Director in Early Care and Learning Education um, at the Low Income Investment Fund. Kim has over 25 years of experience in early care and education sector and currently oversees the low, in, low income investment funds, national early care and education programs, focusing on providing grants, loans, business capacity building and training in California, New York, DC and Georgia. Good job, Kim, good job, Kim. Her leadership is well known in the field. She is a member of the National Children's Facilities Network and a Bipartisan Policy Council ECE Facilities Task Force. Let's welcome Kim. Thank you, Kim. Next, we have Monica Guidry. She is a family child care owner, director, and educator, my fellow child care business owner. Monique has been in the ECE field for the past 25 years. She was the president of the Family Child Care Association of San Francisco and has been a mentor teacher through the California Early Care, Early Care Child, Childhood Mentor Program for the past 16 years. Good job. She is very active locally and at state level. As an example, she has been appointed by Assemblymember Phil Ting as Assembly District Delegate for District 19. Good job, Monica. Welcome, welcome. Next we have, um, no, that was Monique. So next we have Monica Walter. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Wu Yi Children's Services. Monica has over 30 years of experience in providing social services and advocacy to address chronic poverty, domestic violence, and economic equality. In her current role at Wu Yi's Children's Services, she successfully more than doubled the Head Start and Early Head Start program, expanding from five to 12 early learning centers to become San Francisco's largest program manager. Awesome. Good job, Monica. Nice to meet you. Um, Graham. Graham. Graham Dobson. He is the Senior Policy Analyst uh, at the San Francisco Office of Early Care and Education. Graham is from England. And before locating permanently to San Francisco in 1990, he worked as a classroom teacher in preschool classrooms and nursery schools in London for six years. Good job, Graham. I mean, have you know the man in the field, the male in the field, that is awesome. Um, he has served in his role supporting ECE policy at San Francisco Office of Education since 2012. 
Prior to that, he served in various roles in the ECE community, including the coordinator of the San Francisco Child Care Planning and Advisory Council. Again, nice to meet you, Graham. Nice to meet you all. I know we can't clap. We won't hear the clapping, but oh, okay. <laughs> That is all great. So let's get started because I cannot wait to hear what is being shared today. I'm sure it is going to inspire people. It is going to want people to be more involved, uh, become more advocates speaking up. So we're going to start off this conversation with the overall director of the Child Care Facilities Fund, Mrs. Kim. Could you please share with us an overview of the program and what you have accomplished what you have been able to accomplish with it? Sure, sure. Um, so I'm Kim DiGiacomo. I'm the National Program Director here at LIF for our Early Care and Education Programs. Um, I oversee our work in the Bay Area, Los Angeles, so California, New York, DC, and Atlanta. And um, so for the Child Care Facilities Fund, which is a program of LIF, uh, it's a public-private partnership that's been operating for over 20 years. That's funded through the San Francisco Office of Early Childhood Education, First Five, and Philanthropy. And our goals are to increase access, improve economic sustainability, leverage financing, provide thought leadership, and promote racial equity. And we do that through our programs, which include capital investments through grants and loans, facility and business capacity building, which includes training and technical assistance and consultants, and uh, emergency and disaster recovery. And we also do a lot of policy advocacy and research. And uh, over the past 20 years, um, we've administered over $100 million for facility grants for center and family-based childcare providers, uh, mostly in San Francisco. And that includes 30 million in loans and $10 million in new market tax credits. We actually created a special new market tax credit fund to provide low cost debt for ECE facility projects. And in those 20 years, we've preserved or created or enhanced over 150,000 childcare spaces and provided over 13,000 hours of one-on-one -on -one technical assistance and workshops on facilities and business operations. We also have an emergency bridge loan that we administer. Um, so whenever a program has the need for operating capital on a short-term or temporary basis, um, that bridge loan can be accessed. And then we also have a San Francisco, a, a separate bridge loan um, to help providers through uh, COVID to sustain their businesses, which has to be repaid over the next five years. Uh, in addition, we've done some in-kind work. So we've done over 700 emergency grants in Los Angeles, and we've done Sonoma fire recovery supports and many, many, many COVID emergency grants throughout five Bay Area counties. Um, for every dollar that is invested through our fund, it leverages three additional dollars on average. So most projects are large and um, million, like a million dollars or more. And so, um, our funding is limited, so we're able to work with operators to help them leverage other resources and financing. And 94% of our um, grant recipients are minority or women-owned businesses. Um, the San Francisco Child Care Facilities Fund has different grant and loan types. So we do facilities grants and bridge loans up to $1 million. Sometimes it can be more than that, but it typically is capped at a million dollars. Uh, we also have family child care grants and bridge loans up to $50,000. And those grant types include funding for pre-development costs, new center and family child care expansion and development, 
renovation and repair projects to preserve spaces, startup funding, which can cover operations, and COVID emergency grants. And our funding uh, comes through CalWORKs capacity building money, the San Francisco City General Fund, developers fees that are collected in San Francisco and neighborhood impact fees. And then also um, those funds flow through the Office of Early Parent Education to us. And we've also received some funding from San Francisco First Five. And that, oh, I forgot one more thing. Um, so we convene two, two advisory bodies. One is our program advisory committee. They provide program guidance and we meet on a quarterly basis. And then we also convene the San Francisco Child Care Facilities Interagency Committee, which includes members from the Office of Early Care and Education, San Francisco First Five, the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community De Development and, the, and Planning. And we do facilities planning throughout San Francisco, grant approval. Uh, we manage a pipeline of projects and we prior, prioritize co-location with housing and transportation hubs within the city of San Francisco. And then the last thing is we identify childcare deserts and we do capacity building within those neighborhoods to ensure that there's childcare access. And we also partner with the San Francisco Child Care Planning and Advisory Council, the, the Citizens Advisory Committee of the Office of Early Care and Education and other committees throughout the city. And, and thank you, Jamila. I'll turn it back over to you. Listen, Kim, I, I did not, I didn't want you to stop. Like, oh my goodness, like what you guys are doing is amazing work. Like, I'm I'm ready to move to San Francisco. Like <laughs> you guys are doing great things. So um thank you, thank you. That 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 whole overview was very insightful of, of you guys' program. Thank you again. Now, I am so excited to hear from this man right here from Graham, Graham Dotson. Please come on the screen. Hi, morning. So I'm Graham Dobson. I'm Graham Dobson. I'm a senior policy analyst at the San Francisco Office of Early Care and Education. And I, um, uh, one of my main roles there is to oversee the contract that we have with Low Income Investment Fund to, uh, to work on facility development. So, you know, um, before I worked at, within the city, I actually was a director myself, and I worked with LIF uh, in a different capacity as a director of a program that was built, buying and, and renovating a, 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 a new facility for childcare. Uh, I was the director of that in the Tenderloin at the time. And so, you know, one thing that, you, that I realized is that just because you're a childcare administrator or a childcare director doesn't mean that you're a building project manager. And so the skills that are needed to, to uh, manage that process are very different from running a childcare, you know, or preschool center or family childcare business. So the thing that I think, you know, the, one of the reasons, you know, we're very lucky in San Francisco, we have some dedicated funding for uh, facilities that comes from our development impact fees that um, new developments pay into a fund and portion of that goes directly to childcare to help uh, support the infrastructure for the city for all the new development that happens is happening here so we're very lucky we're very you know it's it's um uh, you know I, I understand that not every um community has that uh, opportunity but you know we we realize that rather than um administering that money ourselves at oece it made sense to do that through a cdfi through a community uh, development finance institution so we put out an rfp um, and LIF uh, was, has been awarded and has been running this uh, fund for many years. And so I think one of the key things, just as, as Kim mentioned, the things, it's, it's a one-stop shop. It's a one-stop shop for the administrators, the family child care owners, who the educators, who, um, who are recipients of the grant. So it's pre-development support. It's navigating the whole system of how, what, where do you start? Who do you talk to? <laughs> The architects, the, the project managers, the design, um, I think LIFT staff have those relationships, have those connections. They, they know who to make those referrals to. And, and they, they're also working with city departments, as you heard with our interagency committee through, you know, with, with the Mayor's Office of Housing, with, you know, with the planning department. 
So I, I think it's a one-stop shop. It means that we can we can take some of the burden off of the administrators and directors of programs and the family child care regulators who are looking to expand or buy a new building or renovate their current building, that they get the technical assistance that they need. And they don't have to try to figure all that stuff out by themselves because it's on top of everything else that they're doing, that's just that can be a real logistical nightmare. And I think leveraging the funding that a uh, lift can um, help uh, support the development is key. Uh, obviously, if you know if the grants that we are providing from the city aren't enough to cover some of the costs, then lift could look into possibly helping with a loan. And then we have um, new market tax credits, which are you know, federal, which they leverage federal funding. Mm -hmm. We have a few projects in San Francisco that have we've been able to to use this to to really benefit programs who are eligible for that funding, who may not have known about that if they hadn't been working with uh, a CDFI with LIF um, at the time. And so I, I think you know one, we just realized that there are some things that the city isn't able to do in this situation. It makes more sense for us to. At this stage, to um, to uh, contract with a uh, with LIF to be able to support our programs, the programs that are specifically the programs that are in a city-funded network. At OECE, we 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 support a, a network of centers and family childcare educators who are part of our early learning San Francisco system, and so it's. it's you know, it's, we don't have enough money to be able to do, I wish we did, to be able to open it up to everybody at this point. We are looking to expand our network and bring more centers and family child care educators in. But at this point, it still is a closed network for this funding for eligibility. But I, I think one other key piece that's, uh, that is, you know, uh, links and partnerships with the fire department and with community care licensing. Um, I think we have quarterly meetings that LIF attend and our office attends, First Five San Francisco attends, the school district attends, and so does the fire department and community care licensing. And having them both in the same room together to, to you know, brainstorm and, 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 and troubleshoot and talk about the, some of the same um, facility uh, that they, facilities that they're working on has, has been eye-opening because often community care licensing and fire department don't talk a lot to each other so i think that's another thing that you know lift participates in that so we're all part of the same you know working on these uh projects together and really trying to to reach out for all uh, parties that are involved so um yeah i think my time might be up but i just that's who we are and um thank you for having me today Woo, Graham that the work that you're doing is amazing thank you for all the work that you do um you just show the importance of um, community collaboration that's 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 what i see i see the community collaboration um so thank you again for all that you're doing for all the information that you shared um before we invite um monique to join us here on the screen um, we will show a video of uh, a fellow home-based child care business owner and educator who um, has benefited from the support of the Child Care Facilities Fund. And here we go. Hello, um, I'm Angelica Guerrero. I am a family child care provider in San Francisco, and I am one of the receivers of this uh, uh, repair and renovation grant that it was um, granted to me through LIFT's agency and all of you, the taxpayers. So um, I want to share with you a little bit of what I did with this grant and to help me reopen my facility. Um, to help family childcare financial challenges, it's very important to my consideration, these four points. Um, we face this challenge on 2020, which one of them was the modifications we needed for COVID-19. Um, at the same time, we needed to sort of create a last minute outdoor classrooms for all because um, it was the healthiest way to be able to care for the children. And then we were hit by fire season. So we needed to um, create adaptations for that. At the same time, we always have to remember our childcare providers need a little bit of health insurance because we are not insured. Look at this. Once I received the grant, in the left hand, you will see my facility has a, a, a lot of space in the front area, but it was no use for childcare. 
after COVID-19, I needed to secure an area for do, to run the wellness check. And for that, I thought to create a fence, as you can see in the left side, in the right, uh, in the right uh, picture, uh, right side picture, uh, there is a fence that helped me secure the children from preventing them from the street, but at the same time, to create this beautiful space for them to be able to say goodbye to their parents um, and allow me to run the wellness check uh, to make sure all the kids were healthy before they were separated from the parents. Uh, because the outdoors, it makes it very healthy. And also it has a lot of plants and stuff that will help them to channel the anxiety from saying goodbye. Then um, I needed to use the backyard, but not just for part of the day. This time I needed to use it for the entire day. But I didn't have a sink. I have only what you see up there, this watering can that that's what we use in the backyard to wash hands or rinse last minute. But now I needed to sanitize all toys, everything, every after every use. So the grant was used to create this thing that you can see. And look at how independent this child looks, washing hands. And at the same time, we can also wash all the um, utensils we use in the day. At the same time, um, we still need to create more last long in solutions, maybe a permanent outdoor classroom. And for that, look at the potties. <laughs> this is how we still do potties. Um, go to the potty outdoors in, 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 in portable potties with plastic bags, but it will be nice to have maybe a permanent outdoor bathroom with the sewer and, and all what is needed to actually make it more permanent. During November, October, actually, we were hit by fire season and we were not ready for it. And we were very surprised because now we could not be outdoors because that could damage the kids' children's loans. So we have to be indoors, but facing COVID-19 challenges, plus the smoke filtering in our Victorian homes, it was not expected. So the grant helped me to buy immediately, last minute, a ton, a two fire, a pur uh, air purifiers and this fantastic uh, air quality meter to help me monitor because as you can see, I have to tape windows, tape doors, tape everything to prevent the smoke from keep coming in. Um, and of course, this was just a last minute adjustment that was helpful. We are open and serving, but we will need probably a little bit more help to make sure we can do a last, uh, long lasting modifications for, to get ready for the next fire season. Um, as you see, you know, just these few um, changes, um, and adjustments help help in, um, childcare's like mine to be able to open and continue offering services for the families to care for the children of San Francisco, and a little bit more help is going to be needed along with 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 all what we're doing to secure the health of the children and our health too. We also need some health care. Uh, it will be very important your support and to allocate the necessary funding to continue doing these renovations. Some of them that needs to be permanent and some of them that will continue just be probably a little bit of last minute to address the, the, the needs, but at the same time without uh, losing any of the quality of the care we are offering and providing for the families. Thank you for your help. Thank you. Thank you. That, um, wow. Just to see where these funds are going, how much they are helping family home child care provider, providers to um, sustain and to continue to um, provide quality child care in a safe, in a safe environment. Um, it's, it's great. Um, now let's, let's hear from um, Monique. If, um, if you could come on and please tell us your perspective on home-based child care businesses, how they benefited from the child care facilities fund. Great. Uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Jamila, for that warm introduction. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, Good morning, everyone. I am Monique Idri. I'm the owner and director of the Family Child Care um, owner and director and educator of Gidry's Care and Education Program. 
I've been in the workforce, EC workforce for 24 years. I've worked as a teacher and assistant director at a center base here in San Francisco and currently operate um, my large family childcare for the past 15 years in the OMID 11 district of San Francisco. I'm a mentor teacher through the California Early Childhood Mentor Program through City College of San Francisco. And we're committed at GCP supporting children with diverse abilities, low income families, and dedicated to improve mental health. I've worked alongside a mental health consultant for the past 22 years and really um, dedicated to support health in mental health in children and families in San Francisco. I'm also ELS um, through OECE. Child care facilities fund grant. Why? Why apply? Why is it important? Here is a picture of my yard prior. I wanted to give the children a different experience than the traditional yard I had prior. Um, I was seeking an outside environment that allowed them to explore new sensory, motor skills, take risks, and yes. overcome those fears of it's okay to be dirty. Sorry, Monique. Yes. Monique, we, yeah. we, we can't see the slides, and I do not want us to miss the beautiful oh. setup that you have. I'm so sorry. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You, the way you were describing it, like when we see it, we're like, wow. There we go. Can you see now? Yep. I'm so sorry, y'all. I thought. No worries. I could... no worries. Okay, there we go. Now you can see. Everyone can see now. Thank yes. you. Um, and also the um seeking out the grant was the hope to support their creativity, their independence, and allow them to have a lifelong love of learning. Um, and also a way for them to connect their experiences with the outside world and their families. go. And the benefits of the child care facility grant. It's a way we're family child care, we're a small business, but we're an even smaller business. And it's a way for us to access funding that sometimes is not accessible for us. Um, it supports the families and the community that we serve. It invests in the um, early child care workforce with intention. This grant not just allowed me to participate, but it also allowed for my teachers and FCCs also have assistants and teachers with BAs and it allowed them to connect their learning with their new outside environments. It reduces barriers for family child care to access resources um, and engages community feedback and it provides opportunities for hands-on reflections and explorations, um, allowing collaborations with other family child care networks to say, you know what, you don't have to be a grant writer to apply for a grant. They're there to help with technical assistance and any support that you need. Um, and it also inspires us to provide that quality care. Here are some pictures of our build-up day. It's a lot of work. And what the yard looks like now in the kids enjoying their new experiences and ways for teachers to connect what they're getting from the workshops to bridging the work. Um, also a way for LIF, I just wanna go back a few, that it also gives opportunities for FCCs to seek funding for expansion and renovation. Um, as Angelica was talking about in regards to expanding and adding modifications to um, our sites, especially during COVID. Um, I'm seeking to expand. I know there's another FCC that's expanding her FCC, opening a center next month. So being able to access the grants really allow us to continue to provide that quality care for our families. Um, and that's about it. Thank you for the opportunity to share. I'll pass it back to you, to Jamila. Um, again, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much, Monique, um, for sharing all that you shared. And what I keep hearing is the partnerships, the collaborations. Um, it's, it's so important that we have these collaborations. Um, so I want to thank you. Thank you for sharing. So I want to 
to invite uh, Monica, Miss Monica. Hi, how are you? Very good, thanks. That's great. So Monica, you have been in the ECE field for, for many years, many years. Um, yeah. Yeah. Man, managing these centers, um, serving hundreds of children. Um, could you please share with us how um, center-based child care operators benefit from the child care facilities fund? Um, okay, great. <clears throat> Do we have a video first? I, I'm getting a message that there's a video to be shown. No? Okay, we're just going to go right to my, oh, yeah, okay, sorry. I think there's something before me. Yeah, that just hopefully. No, we we already. S okay, we've seen the video. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> let's go right to the uh, to the slides I presented then, um, so we can go through those together. So first of all, thank you very much for having me. Um, you know, I'm going to start with just saying that uh, Wu Yi Children's Services is a is a multi service agency. We do early Head Start, Head Start, as well as other uh, services like resource and referral. We believe that every, uh, it's so important that every child not only gets a head start, but the best start. And um, I'm looking for my slideshow, so I can't see it yet. So anyway, I, I wanted to- Can you not see it? Uh... I, I see a planning for childcare facilities. It's not the right- Oh, sorry Anderson. about that. Okay. <laughs> Um, when we get my slideshow going, I can go through it with you, but there it is. Okay. Can we share that full screen, please? Okay, here we go. So um, this is our belief statement at Wu Yi. Uh, again, we believe nothing is more important than uh, essential, excellent childcare and education for all of our kids right from the start. So we think when we stand up for one another, we stand up for, for children. Uh, when we stand up for children, we stand up for one another. Next slide, please. Um, this is a, a map of San Francisco. And we, you can see here where the dots are. This is where our existing uh, 12 early learning centers are. Um, so we we're, we're really have a presence throughout San Francisco. Um, started in Chinatown years ago, but that's our history and our roots, our legacy, but we have a commitment to serve all children from all racial ethnic backgrounds and we're doing just that today. Next slide. Um, we have five new centers in the pipeline, which is pretty, uh, it's, it's impressive, but it's also very daunting. And I can tell you right now that without the help of LIF and our community partners, these, these centers would not be built. Um, now they're all in the pipeline um, and I'm gonna sh share with you and highlight for you one of the most important projects that we're working on currently. And that is the project that's a part of Hope SF in Sunnydale. Next slide. Why Sunnydale? And why? I wanna also highlight the overlap in importance in terms of uh, eliminating inequality in, in uh, economics and social emotional, as well as, as all of the things that we know are, are driving the income inequalities and the social inequalities in our, in our communities. And that is that Sunnydale is an example of a neighborhood full of resilient, resourceful people with dreams and talents, just like all of us who want the best for their kids. Uh, but this is, this is what they've been facing for, for generations now. Next slide. <clears throat> Next slide. Okay, so, so this is the new center. It's going to be the heart of uh, revitalization in Sunnydale, creating a hub where uh, children and adults from different incomes and ethnicities and cultures will come together to learn, play, and, and, and grow together. Next slide. Um, next slide. Oh, I think we've missed some. Anybody? This is, this is a picture of what it looks like. Um, it's going to be a beautiful new hub, but one of the most important things about this project is the fact that it is um, tied to affordable housing. Uh, next slide. Um, it's going to be a part of replacing 775 poorly maintained apartments that have been basically contributing to the, to the um, really income and, and social and academic inequality for decades because um, of the bad shape that they've been in and how, how they have contributed to um, a lot of trauma in the neighborhood. So now we're gonna have uh, a one-for-one -one replacement and 
new homes as well as affordable rental housing. Next slide. Um, this is the current um, situation with Sunnydale. As you can see, um, this is why our involvement there with creating a new early learning center as well as partnering with Mercy Housing and Boys and Girls Club is so critical. And that is because we're looking at these data points as these are just data points. These are real people. And you can see here that 70% of the people living in this neighborhood are living in poverty. They have a 14 year shorter life expectancy, 73% um, unemployment, and only a $14,000 median income. So this is a, a, a neighborhood that has been in, enveloped in gross, um, chronic poverty and inequality for decades. Next slide. The kids living in Sunnydale, and there's 700 of them, 53% chronically absent from school and 50 per, only 50% complete high school. Again, I wanna highlight how early learning centers tied with economic development of affordable housing and other support services can be an important trajectory in changing the life and, and the life expectancy and the success for thousands of kids. Next slide. So we're working with Related, Boys and Girls Clubs, Mercy Housing, and then Wu Yi. Next slide. I want to show you one of the things that we have to deal with when we're talking about building a project out in San Francisco. Not only is the project extremely expensive, and what I, when I say this, I want you to quickly, if you can in your head, do the math. Um, we're finding that Per square footage build out in San Francisco is between five and $600 a square foot. And that is, that is an incredibly expensive project. And so the lift, the $1 million that we get from lift is, is not enough, but it's, you know, it's a huge, it's a huge important part of project completion. But we started this project in planning and design reviews in 2017, and we're not expected to open until 2024. So you can see that's seven years from inception and design review to open, opening. Now, granted, this is a large project because it's, it's transformational in its, in its uh, scope, but we're also seeing most project in San Francisco taking at least four to five years from the time that we have, um, you know, uh, the, the site, uh, site control and design review to occupancy. So uh, one of the issues we have is we need to speed up this process. We need advocacy to help us do this in San Francisco, but we also need the help of other partners like state partners and others, private foundations to help us close the gap because the, uh, the amount it takes to open a childcare center in a high cost county like San Francisco is exorbitant. And the nonprofits that are doing this work are not doing it for money. We know that, right? All of, our, all of our centers, by the way, in, in all of the 600 children that we serve are Head Start, Early Head Start. They're 100% uh, subsidized. So we have, we have no money coming in from private pay. And if we do expand, you know, that'll, be just, that, that'll just be addition to, to the low-income children that we're serving now. But that's where the need is. So um, you know, we, it takes all of us. We know that uh, this is a huge project, but it, it definitely is one that's dependent on the wonderful support of LIF. And, and just to point out that uh, we, ex we have exceptional challenges in San Francisco. We wanna keep building, but it, it's an exceptional uh, amount of work and it takes a lot of money. So thank you. Just the, the last slide just shows you that the whole campaign is a $40 million campaign. Just everything, everything you just shared, Monica. Um, man, I had to, I, I took some photos of it. The 73% unemployment rate, yes. the 70% families living in poverty. This is this adverse childhood experiences, yes. you know? And yes. when you... I love when you share, you know, you have these resilient people in here, you know, you have people that want to do better, that want to do more, that want to 
uh, have more opportunities for their children so that their children are successful. But how are we going to help them get to that level? You know, we need more people speaking up. Like you said, the advocacy, we need more funding to create these opportunities so that these children can have a successful life. That's right. There are future. There are future. We're here doing what we need to do to make people aware. Um, I love what everyone is doing. I love all the collaboration. Um, funding is so important and it's needed. The children are our future and it's our future as well. Right. What are we going to do? Yeah, just, just to say again, Jamila, what you mentioned, you know, the adverse experiences. We see that every day in Sunnydale, and that's why this finishing this project is essential. Yes, yes. Well, everything you're doing, your work is expiring. It, it is inspiring, and I'm looking forward to seeing your shovel-ready projects become reality. And whoo, we need some of this work in Solano County. We really do. Um, so right now, what we're going to do, we're going to check out a video of another child care center who has benefited from the child care fund. Um, from the child care facilities fund. It's me, Kiwani. This is the new Mission Kids. Under the tent, we do our check-ins. They test if how we're feeling. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between your fingers, in between your fingers. Snack time. Oh yeah, guacamole and chips. And that cheesy rice. I like a table. You sit and do tough. I like playing with my friends. Inside of those bins, it's supplies. And that's where we read. Some books is for nap time. That's where we pick our pet packs. Grasshopper and um, two mm -hmm. books. Y eso se son los baños. Remember, wash your hands. And that's where we do art. We have wood blocks. Those marshes. Jugamos a bote, jugamos a, a los caballitos, jugamos a otro caballito, jugamos a bolas. Hi, my posters. <laughs> this is where your balls and toys go. Ya sé cómo construir, cómo leer libros. Que, como que, los papas, donde ponen las cosas, todo. That's where we jump right there. En ese salón hay un libro. Aquí está el libro que tenemos. A, B, C, A, B, C, U, A. That's where we play with those balls, and that's where we play with those hula hoops. You can go outside or play, or you can rest your body. Those are my things where I put my clothes in my backpack and my hat. Meg didn't find glasses, and then we found an avocado with them. I see the fishes. I like it. They're so cute. I like the small one. Ooh, what is that? Whoa. This is where my classroom is upstairs, and that's the jumpy area. We have a kitchen and a bathroom, and our cubbies, and our clock, and two doors, and books. That's the rock wall to climb to a pivot top. I like to play with the timers. I like everything on top of the roof. We ride the bikes and scooters. We take turns and 
then we play in that grass right over there. It's very pretty. You get a nice view, and you can look down and see other people, and you can say bye and hello. And to the tower, there's like this whole beautiful world. I feel happy to go to school. I love my school so much. And that's it. Yeah, I'm on Mason Cage. Look, I'm over here really like having to fix my makeup and everything. Did you guys see that video? Did you guys see what I saw? Like, oh my goodness. Listening to those kids, hearing how much these environments have impacted them and are giving them opportunities that they need to succeed. And it's, it's a part of their development. So this, this funding is so important. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry, I just, these children... Woo, this stuff is so important. Mission Kids, man, God bless everyone who is um, who is a part of that, making it happen. So I just want to invite everyone on the screen. We're going to talk, we're going to have some questions, some Q&As. Um, I'm trying to get myself together because that video was like, woo, that needs to be shared everywhere. <laughs> like it does. So I want to start with some questions for Kim. Kim, can you share um, what makes the Child Care Facilities Fund successful and what is unique? Well, uh, that's a great question. I would say um, all of our collaborations, uh, support from the Office of Early Care and Education, our interagency committee. Um, I think over the past 10 years, we've really developed the capacity of a lot of the agencies that we work with. It's taken time, but um, you know, oftentimes you hear that childcare operators are more focused on education and not not they don't always have a business background. But um, I think in San Francisco we have some of the strongest operators in the state, and part of that is because of the history of the city and county working uh, to build the capacity of these programs, and then the. The other thing is just our team of staff. Like you have to have some pretty specialized skills <laughs> to be able to provide technical support for these big projects where construction is happening and fund development is happening uh, to ensure that the projects are a success. So I, you know, I we couldn't do this without the team of amazing staff that we have. Cool. You guys are. You guys, this is what it looks like, collaboration and partnership. Like you guys are, you guys are making it happen. It's, this is something I want to try to model here in, in Solano County, because if I'm not mistaken, um, we serve around the same amount that San Francisco serves and whew, the stuff, yeah, we're, we're going to get to where you are because all our babies need it across, yeah. across the state of California. They all need yeah. it. So. I forgot to add one thing and that is political support, like mm -hmm. just having different supervisors in support of the work and um, just high level systems, advocacy and change is really important. And I think maybe Graham could say more about that as well. Okay, okay. Thank you, Kim. You guys heard what Kim said, it's important advocacy, elected officials, those are the ones who make sure we get the funding. And it's so important to connect with your elected officials and let them know what's going on. Show them that Mission Kids video. Ooh, show them that video. <laughs> uh, for Graham, now that you know you all have this um, $250 million, now that we have this $250, um, $250 million, dollars allocated um, as a part of the 2021-22 state budget for facilities. How do you see these funds invested in underserved San Francisco communities and um, how, how, how would these funds be leveraged? Well, I mean, I think it's a perfect example of using local and state funding together. You know, to, to Monica's point earlier, like the, a lot of the projects that we have in the pipeline we know that we don't have enough money coming through our development impact fees that are being collected here in San Francisco to be able to cover the costs, the full costs of any of the projects that we have. Um, you know, the, the and San Francisco is such an expensive city to be working in and, and trying to, to, to do the good 
work that we do and, and expand capacity is just it's it's overwhelming so you know we do what we can we're, like i said we're very lucky we have our own city funding it flows through our office and we send it to lift and lift get to give these grants but i think if we know that there are there are projects that are out there, especially these high, you know, if there were if there were high priority projects, I look at SF Hope. I look at those who are who are who are in like housing developments that are that are changing communities. I think if there were some similar kind of priorities at the state level about where these funds could be directed, or we have projects that are just like if they're at the very last stage and all they need is more money to make up that gap, then I think those could be uh, you know areas that the state could look at to say let's see where we could best utilize these funds and get the get more bang for our buck right away and we're leveraging local money at the same time or other sources of funding so you know i'm hope you know i we'll see how it goes with the with the state funding but i know that even though it seems like we're resource rich in san francisco and and people are like well san francisco has enough money and they've already got all these development impact fees and we can't do any of that stuff it's, you know, we have about 30 projects in the pipeline and all of those, we, we're not getting the development impact fees anymore because of COVID development stopped for several years. And that's a long process until you get to the stage where those fees are collected. And so we're gonna have a few years where we're not gonna be getting that, those resources coming in that we can devote to the facilities. So as much as, as much as the state can help us, because we want to grow, we want to serve more of our preschoolers. We want universal pre-K here for three and four year olds. We want to serve more infants and toddlers. So the more funding that we can get from local, state, and federal, uh, the better it is for, for everybody. I agree. I agree with everything you said. And in San Francisco, just the, the high cost to live there, um, everything, everything impacts it. And yeah, the funding, 30 projects, that's, yeah, we need more funding. The funding needs to come down. And it, only if the state um, official to really think about uh, these children are our future workforce, you know? They're our future workforce. How are we gonna set them up? How are we gonna really be sure we're putting them in these environments that are stimulating their brain, you know, where they have access to their executive functioning, you know, um, that they are um, co play well with others, you know? Yeah, we need more funding. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Graham. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. Miss Monique, my fellow child care provider. Girl, I am so proud of you and everything that you are doing. I cannot wait to connect more with you, Monique. Um, please tell me, what makes it easier for child care businesses like us, okay, um, to access the funds and resources from the child care facilities fund? I think the support of LIF that they offer when applying for these grants. And Liz was doing a little bit of hand-holding right throughout the process. Um, specifically for my project, working with contractors and everyone else in between. You know, that's not what I went to school for, right? The engineering and all that other stuff. Um, having someone to take that weight off um, really, really helps. And connecting with you know, the other providers and showing them it's not that hard applying for the grants. And yes, it's a lot of work, but at the end, to see that smile on that baby's face when they walk through that door and their eyes shine, they're like, oh, you know, it's all worth it. It's all worth it. And the families, when they're, you know, they're so appreciative of, you know, all the work that we do and the teachers and connecting with each other, it's really important. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, every, look, I understand, I, I totally do. I, understand, I know what it's like to see the kids light up when you have a new toy or just new anything. Like, you know, kids get tired of the old and, you know, want something new, cause it, it helps. Um, it really does. And like you said, having someone there to support you. I know there's a lot of childcare providers that may wanna apply for these funds and, you know, um, and we need to, we need to, we, we need not to be afraid, connect with someone, um, get the resources you need, because also you'll see, they'll see that we need more funding because more providers are in need of the support. So thank you. Absolutely, thank you, Jimmy. I just wanna to add to um, the renovation and the expansion grants as well, that it's obtainable. It's, you can apply and they will help you every step of the way. 
Okay, okay. Ooh, we have to we have to wrap it up. And I ooh, because I wanted to hear from Monica just to share. If you can, real fast, Monica, um, what type of funds compromise uh, most of the resources you usually raise to open up a, a new center? Well, the, the thing about Wu Yi, because we do have a large federal grant, we can leverage those federal federal funds to, to provide operating. And we have a large CDE contract. The issue is the infrastructure. You know, we we need we can we can expand. We've got the capacity to expand, and we have developers coming to us and saying, "We'd love you to have a childcare facility in this new affordable housing project, but we can't build it out because we just flat flat out don't have enough money." So that's the sad part of it. As Graham mentioned, you know, these projects are coming in for a build out for 35 to 45 children at you know 1.8 to 2 million plus. And you know that is a, a, a huge price tag to pay. We wanna do it, but until we have additional leverage funds from either the feds or our state, we're gonna leave a lot of, un we're going to unfortunately not be able to complete a lot of these wonderful projects that we know we need in San Francisco to take those 3000 children off the wait list. 3000 children still without access to subsidized care. So it's a matter of, we've got the will, it's a matter of finding the funds. And that's where LIF is essential, but LIF has to let, we have to leverage the one wonderful money from LIF with, this other, with these other sources of funding to get these projects built. Because we wanna do it, we have the will to do it, we can do it, but we need that additional support. All right, thank you all again for joining. Thank you for all that you are doing. Anybody watching this advocate, we need more support. Um, I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Um, yes, thank you so much. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. I cannot wait to connect with um, you. Erica, I'm sorry. I know we went over time. I'm so sorry. This was a great conversation. Very informative. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I just want to thank everybody for being with us today and um, remind everybody to take action, ncfn.org. Take action, tell your Congress representatives that we need the funds for child care infrastructure as everybody here highlighted today. And please join us in uh, future events. Um, visit our website, buildupcalifornia.org. We have a series of roundtables happening this month. I hope to see you all in the future events. Thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day.